An early review of TikTok's photo sharing app, Elon drops the V word, Google considers buying HubSpot, and remembering technology of long ago. All this and more on today's Strong Coffee Drip. Tom and Jerry, Chewy and Han, Mario and Luigi, the guy with glasses from Proclaimers, and the other guy with glasses from the Pro Proclaimers. All duos far more famous than the duo we present to you today. Brian and Ian from Strong Coffee Marketing. Ian, how are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you, Brian. How are you? Good. I brought up another Proclaimers reference for I, you because you're I, from I, Scotland. I, heard that. I think one of them doesn't wear glasses. I think I thought you were going to... Yeah. I, I, I went and did some Googling and I saw a picture with both of them with glasses okay, on. Fair. You know, maybe one of them has contact lenses now. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> regardless, we'll do another episode on whether or not the Proclaimers still wear glasses. Think, It'll go over really well. Yeah. Uh, so we are rolling as a duo this week. Duncan is in Arizona for a brief vacation, probably looking for Hector in Tucson. Hopefully they connect up and, and Duncan can say hello. Duncan might be away this week, but the drip rests for no one, except when I went on vacation and we didn't record for three weeks. But other than that, we rest for no one. I think we've got a really fun episode. Uh, Ian and I were chatting beforehand, talking about some of the topics we want to cover today and already having some laughs. So I think this will be really fun. Um, I think we just get right into it. Sure. So we start with another round of this or that. Here are two newsworthy stories from the world of marketing. And Ian, as a marketer, let's have a little conversation about which one of these we find more interesting. So sure. story number one, this happened just a couple days ago. If there's one thing Elon Musk is good at, it's getting the internet in a tizzy. And with one of his latest tweets, he does it again. Elon casually dropped a poll on X asking if he should bring back the once popular Vine app. Obviously, people went a bit crazy and he had an overwhelmingly positive response in his poll. This might not be all talk, though, as an engineer at X actually shared a link to Logan Paul's mothballed Vine page just to fire people up even more. Would Elon actually consider bringing Vine back from the dead? And if so, would people really care enough to use it? And story number two, a number of online outlets have reported that Google is considering buying HubSpot. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, HubSpot is one of the leaders in the inbound marketing software space. While some think, Google, some think Google could probably just go out and build something like this on their own, other people think it's really, really smart as the potential would acquisition would allow for Google to get a whole bunch of really useful customer data, as well as a turnkey opportunity to jump into the CRM and marketing automation business. Ian, we've got... Elon dropping hints about something on X. We've got Google and HubSpot considering getting together. Which one of those stories do you find more interesting? Um, well, from a, when we're talking about Elon, he's got to be the king of marketing. I mean, if, if he can get his name out there and get people looking at him, he's going to do it. So I've got to talk about Elon here. Um, but uh, yeah, so the Vine story, I think, is interesting. Obviously, it has... Um, got a lot of people interested. People are very nostalgic about it. Those people that used Vine back in the day, I think are very nostalgic about it. And perhaps looking back through rose-tinted glasses, I'm not sure. Um, but I do, my concern is that unless you were a Vine user back in the day, you're not going to care. And I think that the world has moved on. A lot of people are now into the the world of TikTok, that's what they're used to, that's what they're logging into several times every single day. So I don't think that Vine would make enough of a splash to be relevant again in this day and age. I think a lot of people who were on it before will try it again, but I think if you weren't on Vine previously, um, the, the younger generation who's never even used it or may have heard of it, but yeah, never used it, I don't think they'd be interested at all, unfortunately. So yeah. I'm sorry, Elon, but I don't know that this will, uh, that this will, yeah, have the impact that he's hoping it will. There's a lot of things going on in his world. And to me, it almost is like one of those, hey, look over here, a squirrel mo yeah, yeah, moments like where, you know, hey, look at the shiny object over here while you don't pay attention to what's happening over here. Yes, the fires yeah. are going on over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. It was, was kind of like in its time, Vine was 
pretty cool. You think of a guy like, like mentioned Logan Paul, that's kind of how he got to start. Right. Yeah. Um, and at the time, yeah, sure. That was a neat app, but it was kind of like vine crawled. So TikTok could walk. And I think going and releasing an app now that does less than apps that are out there, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So well, the, the I, other, I agree. Yeah. The other thing is potentially they change it to try and update it. And then it's not what people remember. So the people who, who want it are, kind of put off of it as well you know so it's kind of like how do you win over all of those audiences and i they may do it i mean good luck to them if they can win over all those audiences and make a splash that'd be that'd be wonderful but yeah yeah i just yeah. i can't picture how that's going to happen at I'm, this stage. I'm not i'm not sure and you know what I, I did i did find it funny that instead of it being all kind of bluster then they go and share the link to the live logan paul vine account and it's like oh just so you know we still have this stuff we <laughs> We could flip a switch. Yeah. So, um, but I, I kind of agree. It's, it's, it was interesting in that moment because I was like, oh, that'd be funny. But then I moved away from it and I didn't really care yes. anymore. For me, the, the Google HubSpot thing for what we do as marketers um, is a big, big story and a big opportunity. Um, we aren't a HubSpot agency. Um, we've looked at HubSpot in the in the past. It's a it's a good product and and yeah. works for a lot of people. Um, but basically, an inbound marketing kind of an all in one inbound marketing platform. But if Google were to step in and buy it, I think there's all sorts of interesting things that could happen with, um, you know the amount of data they would get um, with cookies kind of falling by the wayside and the ability to track like that. All of a sudden here's a big data dump of, of, of customers and what they do, et cetera. Um, but I, I think, you know, imagine if all of a sudden you had Google getting into the CRM game and combining everything they have through Google ads and Google search. And we chatted last week about the potential for a Google AI search you know, building that into like that Google workplace or Google workplace um, thing that we already use, you know, with Absolutely. Gmail and Drive, etc. That could become a really interesting proposition oh, for businesses and agencies and and, and marketers. Um, I don't know if it would happen, but it is interesting. Yeah. I, I know some of the articles that are out there talking about the dollar figure. It's a big acquisition. It's sure. you know, we're talking about a lot of money. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. No, I think potentially, from our, yeah. From our as fun as it is to talk about uh, Elon and his and his yeah. tweets, um, yeah. There's no doubt that this is the bigger story from a marketing standpoint. It's it's yeah. a very very interesting one. Um, like you say, I think that yeah, Google I'm sure would would love to get their hands on all that information. I do wonder, Google have. I wonder if they change it because obviously they don't want Google um, has a history of of changing things, not always for the better, unfortunately. And I would. It would be a real shame, I suppose, if Google did manage to acquire them and then tried making changes from us, uh, you know, a formula that currently works very well for HubSpot. So um, I would hope that that wouldn't happen. But yeah, Google, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. It would be, it would be, it would be very interesting. And like you yeah, said, it... so many people are on the G Suite already. So many businesses are on the G Suite, and so many other customers are already on HubSpot. That yeah, they're they're. When you combine those two things, if they wrap it all into one, then they've just got a, a, an enormous user base and an enormous oh, yeah. data to pull from. So. Think about how you could tie creating Google ads into a Google-based CRM. Like, mm. Think of the possibilities there. It, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And you're right. I think if it was basically became HubSpot by Google and it kind of yeah. just remained the way it is, but you integrate Google more, cool. But you're right. If they go and and decide they want to reinvent the wheel with something that clearly works, then mm. what are we doing here? Right? Like you might as well just go build your own. Sure. So um, we shall see, we okay. shall see. And, uh, and I'm sure there'll be a lot more made of this. And I think if the acquisition were to happen, it would easily become the more interesting story, unless oh. Elon does something even crazier. <laughs> oh, he will. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, one thing with Elon, I, I, I don't, you don't hear much about it anymore. But remember when he fired the Tesla into space with the, with the space man? Yes. Yeah, and it's still going around somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. that was a big story to me. It was back in the day because I thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. It's a roadster, I think, floating up in space. It was, somewhere. Yeah, absolutely right. And it was, well, yeah. I mean, we're kind of getting off track here a bit, but obviously Tesla up until recently hasn't done any advertising. It's all been yeah. word of mouth and and media stunts like that one sort of thing. So. Uh, they haven't needed to up until recently so yeah that was a that was a big story from a 
how much does it cost to shoot a Tesla into space versus how much does it cost to do a massive advertising campaign? And they clearly felt that was good value for money. Yeah. Mm. I would question whether or not that Tesla is insured. And you know what? <laughs> I don't think he's getting it back. No, probably not. No, I, I think, think that one. Or one or two, though. Yeah. So you're not getting it back, <laughs> Elon. Sorry. All right. We turn our attention to what be, what might be one of the biggest stories, especially here in Canada. Um TikTok's jump into the photo sharing game. So it's kind of been out there for a while that TikTok was testing something called um, TikTok Notes, basically their version of uh, Instagram. And I know I had read a couple articles and I was kind of thinking like, oh, do you need to do that? Is it a make work project for the TikTok engineers? Like, why are we doing this? Well, it turns out that TikTok Notes is now being tested in Australia and Canada. And good news for us, we're in Canada. So uh, I had a chance to download TikTok notes and I thought I would provide a bit of an early review. So oddly enough, Ian, for TikTok notes, I made notes. Wow. I have a whole book of notes <laughs> on TikTok uh, notes. So I can tell you a little bit about it. I just downloaded it this morning. Um, I knew that it existed, but I know I looked in the Google Play Store a few, I don't know, a week or so ago, and it wasn't there. And then when I saw they were testing it in Canada and in Australia, which is something they just announced the other day, I was like, you know what, I'm going to get it. I, I want to see how it works, something that we do, uh, regardless of if we use an app or not for our clients, we like to test it out to have a better understanding of it. So here's kind of my, my early review of TikTok notes. Um, when you sign up for it, you sign up and it's uh, it knows right away if you've got a TikTok account. So it knew right away that we were Strong Coffee and we I logged in as Strong Coffee. Uh, it pulled over our profile bio and our um, profile picture. The the idea of pulling followers over, kind of like when Threads re was released with Instagram, that doesn't happen. So we're sitting at zero following, zero followers, etc. Um, a brand new fresh fresh account. I would say it feels a lot like if you mash together TikTok with Instagram, with threads and Pinterest, like put them all in a blender and see what comes out. That's kind of how I feel about TikTok notes. Um, the one thing that was kind of interesting from, you know, how I relate it to Pinterest is your feed. There, there still is a for you and a following feed, just like you would see on TikTok. Um, the feed itself, instead of being a single post coming by this way or going this way, I guess, um, it's kind of that masonry look where there's multiple posts that you can see at one time, very similar to how you would see it on Pinterest. So that was a little bit unique. And of course, um, the posts that are visible on our account, even though we're not following anybody right now, very Canadian because we're in Canada and that's where they're testing it. So it's right now it's kind of funny because it's in a way it's like our own personal Canadian app, which is kind of cool. It's all Canadian content, um, which will change obviously over time. Um, there's obviously very little engagement right now as well because everybody's just testing it out. Um, it reminds me a lot of when threads came on board in July. Uh, I remember as the clock ticked to four o'clock or whatever time, what time, uh, our time when threads went live, I got on it right away because I wanted to see what it was all about. And it was kind of like a lot of people posting stuff, but no one engaging. It was like people yelling into an empty room. That's kind of the feeling it gets now. Obviously that's not something that would last for very long. Um, when you talk about building a post, I think this is probably the most interesting part. It's obviously a photo sharing app, but when you go to build a post, you can actually post up to 35 photos in one giant carousel. Right. So that's a lot of photos. Um, there's the ability to add text to the photos, which looks exactly the same as TikTok, um, putting, putting words over top of the photos, etc. You can also resize and... Um, uh, crop your photos inside of the app as well, which is kind of nice. Um, in terms of a character limit for the post, it's maximum 4,000 characters, and you can also add a title in addition. Um, so that that's a little bit different than what you would see like on Instagram, where you can actually have a whole bunch of photos, a title, and a description. Mm -hmm. You can use hashtags. They showed up just fine. Um, you can use emojis inside of inside of your uh, your description as well. So yeah, it creates this giant carousel. So when I decided I wanted to create a first post for Strong Coffee to see how this whole thing works, I was thinking, well, 
I don't know if we have too many collections of photos that are like 35 photos together that kind of all meld together into some sort of story or um, some sort of topic. Well, sure enough, we do, because if anybody follows us on social, you're probably aware that we have this gigantic sticker wall in our studio has about 2000 stickers on it. And it just happens that when we put new stickers up, I take a picture of them so I can put it on social. So I had a whole bunch of pictures of stickers. So I said, you know what? Let's combine them all together and make a 35 um, photo post, which I did. Um, I also tested to, to see if I was able to add photos of different sizes and um, layouts. Yeah. So I've got some that are square, some that are horizontal, some that are vertical, and how that would look when you scroll through the carousel. And it remains pretty constant. It was easy to do. And of course, you can resize it in the app if need be. So that was one thing that I did test. Um, and like I said, you could use hashtags in it as well. So it, it was it was really easy to make a post as it should be as TikTok and Instagram and all these guys have figured out at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so really simple to do that. You also have the ability to share the posts to different social channels um, beyond just the TikTok universe as well. Uh, you can't edit um, posts, something that TikTok has recently brought in. You can edit TikTok posts. Now you can't edit posts on this new TikTok notes app. Right. Um, and there are no additional analytics. I know with most platforms now you can get an idea of um, how many people have viewed it or, or um, you know, the kind of reach it's getting, et cetera. The only thing is really just the forward facing ones. You can see how many people liked it, favorited it, left a comment. And then when you're looking at the tick, your TikTok homepage, there's a little uh, eyeball that shows, I'm assuming how many views that post has got. Right. Obviously, with no followers, I wasn't expecting very much from our first post. But within a few minutes, we actually had a view and a like. So um, that's showing that that whatever algorithm is in place is pushing this content out elsewhere, regardless of the number of followers you have. Um, so overall, I would say it's very, very early. It's really hard to get a sense of if this thing's going to work from a user um uh, a user perspective, really easy to make posts like all these apps are now. Um, I think the big thing for me is, in my opinion, the TikTok algorithm is the secret sauce. They have it figured out out of all the different social platforms out there. The TikTok algorithm, although it gets a little bit moody from time to time, and I've had my disagreements with the TikTok algorithm, it does an amazing job of showing you a variety of content, figuring out which rabbit holes you want to jump in, sending you down the rabbit holes, but then also being able to pull you back and show you other things, which is really, really unique. And I think is really, really powerful. If they bring that algorithm to TikTok notes, I think they've got something. Um, yeah. I, I think then it would be an easy step up over um, Instagram and uh and that's really the one I think they're focused on, but yeah. even over something like a, like a threads, for example, that's really where for me, if they bring that into the mix, this thing has a chance. Um, but I, I, I guess time will tell as more people jump on and we're able to get a better understanding of, of, of how people use it. If they, if the algorithm isn't quite as, as fantastic as it is on TikTok, I don't think there's enough other, distinctive features in it to make it really stand out. Sure. You can add 35 photos. You can make a 4,000, um, uh, a 4,000 character, uh, description. I don't know if that's enough to get people to jump over. So, um, we shall see. I'm also curious one day, you know, with Instagram and threads, when you're on Instagram, it's hinting about what's going on on threads. You might even see a yeah. threads post there, et cetera. And you can go back and forth between the two. As it stands right now, from what I've seen, there's nothing like that in TikTok notes where you can jump back and, and forth between the two apps. Yeah. So it is a standalone app. That's something else to keep in mind. It's not through TikTok. You, it's a standalone app. Yeah. Um, so overall, you know what? I'll, we'll see where it goes. But yeah, that algorithm is the big thing. If they decide to really go hard with the algorithm here, maybe there's something there. Um, but it's it's really, really too early to tell. Um but it's fun right now because it's all Canadian people talking about Canadian things. So that's kind of neat. A lot of our feed, because we don't follow anybody, was Vancouver based, which obviously makes sense. That's kind of the really big population base close to us here in Edmonton. Um, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Okay. And I know, Ian, you're not a TikTok user. No. Do you think do you think that we need another app out there right now? Like, um, like Yeah, I, I it's certainly interesting. 
I think it's it's certainly interesting. Um, as we were talking about before we started recording the podcast, it's um, it seems like obviously Instagram or, or, or Meta were trying to get in on the, the TikTok uh, action by uh, or sorry um, when they released Threads, they were trying to do something Twitter thing. Uh, yeah, sorry, Twitter that's already been uh, that's already been done. Now TikTok is kind of encroaching on the the area that, again that's already been threaded by uh, by Instagram and things. So. Um, we are seeing some overlap, obviously, and I think it will be interesting to see how they do things um, similarly and differently. Um, but yeah, it will be it will be interesting to see how this unfolds. I'm positive that what you what you mentioned about the fact that it's the two apps and how they'll promote it, I have no doubt that they will start putting um, little snippets inside uh, TikTok itself. Start p- potentially pulling little elements over so that you um, you know it. It customizes you to what you're going to see there by the time you download the app and get people more familiar with that. But yeah, yeah it'll be an yeah. interesting, an interesting time to see what happens. Yeah, and too early to tell if we're going to stick on it as an agency because you know what, we're super sure. busy. We're yeah. already busy enough. Do I want to share even more stuff? But we'll, we will see. We will see. Yes. Um, that's kind of a good segue, if you will, into what we want to talk about before we wrap up. We wrap up today with a look at the past. It's always good to look at the past, especially with a couple of old guys like us, Ian. Uh, If Duncan was on today, Duncan's too young to be able to really look into the past of digital marketing and look at some of the ghosts that exist. Mm -hmm. Think about things like MySpace and Yik Yak, Periscope and Meerkat, Daily Booth, Yahoo Pipes, which I mentioned before, one of my favorites, Um, Tumblr before it got weird, Uh, all channels and tools that once played a role in our lives. Now they rest in the digital marketing graveyard, except for Tumblr, which is basically a zombie that walks around and looks after the place. Ian, which now defunct channel or tool do you miss the most? There are so many to choose from, Brian. (laughs) How do you pick (laughs) just one? Yeah, that's that's the tough part. Yeah, but no, I was, uh, when you asked this question, I was was thinking hard about it. And I I thought back to, uh, before I even moved to Canada, before we even met and started working together, um, back in my previous role, we used uh, the original TweetDeck. Um, OG TweetDeck. OG TweetDeck, oh. which was a tremendous tool back when it first came out. It was, uh, this was, what would it have been, 2009 or something like that? Eight, or nine, somewhere, yeah, yeah, it was early. There, certainly a, a, a number of years before Twitter acquired it in 2011. Um, but back when it was the original form, you could, um, you had multiple accounts in there, multiple channels in there. You could use it for not only Twitter, but uh, also for Facebook and for LinkedIn as well. So um, it was back then, <laughs> what, 15 plus years ago, um, that was that was your main marketing tools that you were using for social. It was it was Facebook and Twitter were the were the main two. Um, LinkedIn was uh, was there, but we weren't using it a great deal for that. Although we were we were on there too. Um, but yeah, it was it was a really handy place. See everything all in one place, and just it was it was a game changer for marketing teams who were on oh, yeah. all these channels and wanted to see things promptly and quickly. You just had to log into one place each day. So yeah, that was a it's a great tool, and it changed quite dramatically in uh, in twenty eleven. Obviously, Hootsuite was still around, which was doing a similar kind of thing, and uh, is still around, I believe. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, uh, but yeah, we're not. So uh, yes, but yeah, our, the original tweet deck was. Oh. Uh, a tremendous tool. Very helpful. That's such a good answer. And I, when you brought it up before we started recording, I was like, how did I forget about the original tweet deck? I don't like to go off on rants to my kids being like, hey, kids, this is what it used to be like in the olden days. Yep. But I can tell you, as somebody that was in social back in those days, yeah. kids, there was nothing better than the original tweet deck. The original tweet deck just changed how we could do stuff. Like you mentioned, yeah. as a team, where you could have all your feeds come in along with um, searches, et cetera. It was perfect for what we did. And now people are like, well, yeah, there's a million tools that can do that. But when it was the original back in the day, it was like mind blowing how this one tool could streamline so much of what we did. I know at that time it was pretty strong coffee for me. Mm. Uh, I had two monitors in my office managing social and one monitor, basically every morning you just open up TweetDeck and it sat on that one monitor all day and you could have your earphones in and you'd be working and then you hear the little bird and then something happened right somebody replied to you or somebody mentioned you um so that's a fantastic one 
OG tweet deck <laughs> will live on forever. In our hearts um, and minds. Yeah. In our hearts and minds. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so for me, I miss, this is more in a way I don't miss it, but I do miss it. I miss the mess of social media and messaging channels that Google introduced. They had a run that was something else. And this was back in the same kind of time frame as OG tweet deck. Um, I'm a big Google guy, despite what Duncan was going off on last week on the podcast, which we should save for when Duncan gets back, because we've had some issues on YouTube with the algorithm, not showing some of our shorts as frequently because of maybe something Duncan said. I don't know, but, but I am a big Google guy. We all are. Um, and I really, really wanted them to have a good solid space in social media. I really did. They have YouTube understandably, but I wanted them to have that, that Facebook or that Twitter, right? I wanted them to do it, but none of them worked. So I remember the first one that really caught my attention was Google wave and Google wave was like, if you took email and messaging and social media and like wikis and just put them in a blender and you made this big communication smoothie, um, it did have some interesting features. I'll give it that, but it was ridiculously confusing. I remember when it first started and we were all excited. I was working with Trevor at the time and we get it and we jump on Google wave and we're just staring at this screen, two guys that had been around the digital space for a while. So it's not like we were rookies or anything. And we're looking at the screen going, I don't even know what it's doing right now. Like it's just, there's just stuff everywhere and you're supposed to put some stuff in other stuff areas. And then that stuff does this. And it was just, I, I worked hard to try to figure it out. But as soon as I started to kind of get what it was, what it was throwing down, it was gone. Yes. But don't worry, Ian, don't worry <laughs> because Google wave moved on, but you know what came next? Google buzz. Nice. Google Buzz was a social media uh, messaging tool that was basically baked into Gmail. Right. And it was also connected to other social media channels outside of Google. Um, then I was like, okay, maybe they took all of Google Wave and they made it a little bit easier to understand. And they put it into Gmail, which was fine for us because we were using Gmail. So that was great. And then they discontinued it just like just over a year from when it launched. And then they're like, no, 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 we got it now. Welcome to Google Plus. And Google Plus, <laughs> I'll give it one thing with Google Plus. It was the most, it was the easiest to understand of the three. And it lasted the longest time, but it still wasn't all that great. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden they've got Google Plus sitting there and um, it lasted for far longer but no one really used it. It at least made for much of that. Although it lasted longer, it was dormant for a lot of that time. I don't yeah. Think really. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. underused. When you look at how social media channels reach certain peaks in history, the one peak is when businesses might actually consider putting that icon on their website. So like everybody's got a Facebook one. Everybody's got a Twitter or X one. Right now, TikTok's a big one. Mm -hmm there were a lot of people that actually had the Google plus icon on their website. So it reached that certain status. No one used it, but they're like, Oh, we got to put Google plus on there. We use Google plus. Mm -hmm. So between wave buzz, Google plus, those are my fond, not fond memories <laughs> of Google trying to get into, uh, into social media. So just a quick timeline for everyone keeping score at home, <laughs> Google wave 2009 to 2010, not much room there. Then they're like, no, no, we got to figure it out. Google Buzz, 2010 to 2011. And then finally, Google Plus, 2011, all the way to 2019. Wow. So in the span of 10 years, three different products. And one of those products was for basically eight of those 10 years <laughs> was in use. <laughs> so I um, think Google Plus had in 2000, at the start of 2019. I don't, users. well, act, there's a difference between users yeah. and active yeah. users. Active users, I could probably put them all in a spreadsheet. Um, people that had it, far, far more because it was integrated with Google, right? So it was almost like at a point where you had Google Plus, even if you didn't want it because you were a Google user. So they were like, oh, you use Gmail and all these other things? Yeah. Google Plus. And it's like, well, I don't really want to be a Google Plus user. Um, it, it's kind of like in a way how a lot of people view LinkedIn, although I think LinkedIn is quickly gaining traction. Absolutely. And there, I just saw the other day about the idea of having um, 
uh, vertical video feed in LinkedIn. And it sounds like it's coming out because they've been releasing some documentation about it. Um, but they're making some strides. And we talked about the gamification on the on the feed yeah. a few weeks ago, too. But Google Plus was that one that they desperately wanted it to work and it didn't. Mm -hmm. So uh, rest in peace, Google <laughs> Wave, Google Buzz, Google Plus, and the OG of them all, OG TweetDeck. <laughs> Thank you for the memories. Great thing. All right. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Strong Coffee Drip. Uh, a big thanks to Ian for hopping on today. Ooh. Obviously, there's just two of us, mm -hmm. but it's a very busy time at our agency. Springtime is really, really busy. So I'm really grateful that you're able to make time for this. Um, we did it in record time as well. There wasn't as much prep as when Duncan's on and we have to fill him in on what the topics are right before we press record. So that was really helpful. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, as mentioned, we're, we're experimenting on TikTok right now and I've actually had some really fun interactions with people on TikTok and, and seeing some, some, uh, some likes on there, which is neat. We are on TikTok notes. Please follow us. No one does. I don't know how long we're going to be there for, but you might as well hop on that bandwagon for now. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure. We will see you next week. Now, Ian, let's get back to work. Cheers. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>